Hey everyone, it's Matt from Movified. I want to welcome you to episode seven, part two with my good friends, Mark and Nick. Let's go. Uh, can you tell me, there's got to be some wild stories or uh, situations because uh, that you've been in, in all the moving industries. I always like to ask people, you know, can you share with me just like a crazy, doesn't have to be so much technology, but like, give me a funny moving story. Oh my, I mean, I got to be careful because I've been in so many crazy situations and weird with things and I've made terrible, terrible mistakes you know, I would, I would be, I would estimate moves myself. I would go out to people's homes. I would see and hear everything. And a lot of crazy things have happened. Um, there's a couple of things that stick out to me. Um, you know, I don't even remember what happened. I don't know why this guy was so upset. I think we went over estimate. He was very, very upset. I didn't know how to make him not upset. I tried my best and, uh, there was no budging on the situation. And I came to a situation where he said, I'm going to come down to your office and I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> um, so that, that, you know, that was an insane, insane situation. There are some people out there who are, you know, in a very stressful situation when they're moving and when things don't go necessarily as planned, which happens every day to us in the moving industry, we have to find ways to deal with it. Um, in a compassionate, empathetic, and understanding way. And, you know, as a little newbie, a green guy who had no idea about moving when I first started, I definitely made a lot of mistakes and um, didn't handle it the right way. But, you know, through those mistakes, we learn, uh, we grow, <coughs> and everyone has... And in, what, and in what way? Come on, let's hear it. Like, so in what way? Like, you're sort of a newbie, like, when, when you're, throwing, you're throwing paper everywhere, you're, like, raging, like, what... So I'm, like, you're a new salesperson, you're totally just, like, effing up on these jobs. Like, yeah. what's, what's happening? <coughs> I mean, like, for example, you really want to get the job, right? And you're like, oh, this is a big move, I really want it, you know, and then you are ready to give an estimate and they're like, Oh wait, I have another thing to show you. And they show you this basement that is like packed with stuff. And it's like, you can't even get past it. You can't even see what's there. And it's like, I'm here on an in-home and they expect a really accurate estimate. What the heck do I even say? Like this, I can't see what's behind here. They don't really know. They can't tell me. I can't move everything sure. myself to see. So how do you give an estimate for something like that? It's like, okay, there's about maybe a whole truck truck worth of stuff here. You kind of estimate based on that. And then maybe there's like a piano in there that they forgot about or who knows. <laughs> right. I mean, I basically this estimate, there was a whole extra day that I forgot or didn't forget, but didn't put in the estimate. Uh, it went really, really long. And that was a really terrible situation. That was like my first month in, in, in moving, learning how to do estimates. Um, uh, you know, the company that I started with, we were, we were new too. And, um, sure. I, you know, I was the first employee not having any experience in moving. And I had to learn myself along with my partner and, you know, we, we just have to do better and, and learn from our mistakes. And that, that's really, um, what we did. And now, now we never go over or underestimate. Um, we're constantly keeping people happy. We have five stars rating with over 3,000 reviews. You know, we're one of the biggest companies in Northern Virginia, D.C. and Maryland. We're like very much up and coming and people are seeing our company a lot more and uh, repeat and referral business is huge for us there. And I'm very pleased with the, with the journey. You know, even with these war stories and these terrible situations and things that we go through that really affect us deeply, um, you know, you can look back on it and say, well, you know what, I maybe made a mistake there, but I learned from that. and I didn't repeat it. Right. So that's what's important. Well, totally. Now you're, and we're talking about reviews. I mean, 3000 reviews is amazing. <clears throat> and you know, in your experience, how important is online reviews for moving company? Like what is the best way to manage and leverage them? Yeah. So, you know, every moving company handles reviews in a little bit of a different way. The, the most common tactic I see and I hear from people I talk with, work with, you know, they'll take a QR code, they'll give it to their movers, and they'll have the movers ask for a review. You know, that's all great. And, you know, you might get some reviews that way, but it's not that efficient. Um, I think that there's a lot of missed opportunity with a system like that. Um, because, you know, maybe the movers don't ask in the right way. Maybe the movers forget. Maybe the customer just has a 
crazy disdain for QR codes. You know, you those grumpy old people that go to the restaurant like, I don't want to use a QR code. Now, I'm one of those guys too, by the way. I don't like QR codes personally. It's kind of annoying for me, but they're very convenient, but there's, you know, you don't know. You're like, give me a, getting... like, give me a menu. I want a menu. Like, right, don't, give me don't make menu. me pull up my phone and QR them. Yeah. I'm definitely one of those guys. I prefer a menu. But uh, I think that, you right. know, we have to implement some kind of system that every single customer goes through in order to get that review. And if we're not implementing a system that works the same way every time and we know that it works, then there's so many missed opportunities and we're not growing our company as fast as we can. The amount of growth in your company, I believe, is extremely tied to the amount of reviews and velocity and consistency of your good reviews that you get posted online. Google, of course, is the best platform to put reviews on, but you should start putting them on other platforms as well. Here in the States, we have BBB. Um, there's a lot of other moving-related platforms and uh, social media, Facebook, other, other ways to get people to post comments or reviews about your service, I think, are all very important. Um, but we have a system called Get Moving Reviews that we use uh, basically we tie it in with a customer satisfaction survey that we require all the uh, moves and clients to to complete at the completion of the move. And there's a 100% fill out rate for that because it's part of our process. Everyone fills out this customer satisfaction survey. They let us know how everything went. If everything was good and they give good responses, they get put into basically an automated funnel that follows up with them, sends them emails, sends them texts every day for a few days after the move. And they post a review. Um, almost, I would say, probably half half of the time they you get a review. So think about getting all those five star reviews half of the time for all the moves that you do. That will help you grow fast. Right now, you know, a lot of people who are just using QR codes are typically getting around ten percent response rate for the reviews. You know, if you can <clears throat> double, triple, quadruple that you know, you're going to grow super fast and you're going to get a really great rating, great reputation online. But what's the difference between, you know, you're saying, well, the movers sometimes might not, uh, uh, you know, articulate best with a card going, oh, here you go, just scan this QR code, give us a Google review and everything else, Mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, oh, here's this form, just fill it out. You know, do you know what I mean? Like I'm playing devil's advocate, but mm-hmm. you still have a sense of teaching them. So if I'm teaching them going, this is, you have to be very professional, show them the card, this is the QR, you know, this is our names, please re- leave us a review, as opposed to saying, well, here is this feedback form. Uh, you, do you, you, you're saying that you find though, because a customer is going through that process, that they're more entailed to then give you a better review or give you a review period, as opposed to just saying, okay, great, fine, I'll scan this and give you a review. There's <clears throat> definitely a certain percentage of people who will put that review up on the spot and you should absolutely push your movers to get it on the spot. You know, strike while the iron is hot, get that review as soon as you can in the process. Absolutely. But when you put them through a customer satisfaction survey, you're really priming them for giving you feedback, right? You're, you're, you're getting detailed feedback about the move. Maybe you have a question on the customer satisfaction survey. We do that says, was there any damage? Did you notice any damage? As soon as the job has been completed, you don't have to depend on your movers to tell you. Your customer will tell you with this customer satisfaction survey. So you can tie a lot of cool um, automated features into that. You know, you could send them a claim form, a claim system based on their response to the survey. And the people who don't put a review online, you'll know that they'll be followed up with automatically. And people that don't do it on the day of the move or as soon as it's done, uh, they're going to be put into a funnel that's going to constantly follow up with them until they do. And I think that's really helpful because, you know, we want to give every opportunity to give someone the opportunity to give us a review. And if we just ask them sure. with a QR code on the day of the move, you know, they may do it or they may not. And if they don't, they're going to forget. So if you have no automation or no system set up to remind them, you know, you're in some deep doo-doo because you're losing a lot of value. You know, these reviews, they're going to stick forever, most of them at least. And these reviews are an asset to your brand and to your company. And if you're losing out on those opportunities every day, every week, you know, you're really leaving a lot of money on the table. Yeah, it's like free advertising. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Now, to flip the script on here, some of the avenues on your website, 
you as a moving company really want to um, utilize, if you don't have a call center, I don't have sometimes enough people answering the phones, but I get a lot of customers that are funneling through my website going, oh, like this sounds great. I'll fill out a form. What's another option that I can to uh, be able to handle customers' questions or, you know, almost have like an FAQ, but um, I want a better option. And I look at it and I go, ooh, chatbots. So I got a chatbot. But now there's the whole chatbot AIs. What's your take on those? Yeah, this is going to be huge. I really believe these type of chatbots, AI bots, um, they're going to be the first implementation that we start seeing <clears throat> immediately coming up very, very soon, if not already. Um, I'm in talks with a few um, CRMs at the moment about integrating AI. Both Marcus and I are very, very uh, excited about the opportunity to implement AI in a lot of these moving CRMs. And you can also implement that right into your website as well. And maybe there could be an integration from the <coughs> CRM to the website. Um, that is definitely the most ideal situation. Uh, there is one I'm thinking about that is is doing this, um, but I, I can't talk about it yet. But uh, there are ways to upload all the information about your company, your rates, your pop frequently asked questions, all, all the content on your website, and train AI on being like a representative for your company. Now, I don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you will be able to replace your salespeople. I don't think that's ever really going to be the case, at least in the next, well, I, don't, I can't even say 10 years, honestly, but I think in the, in the short to medium term, we should not be thinking about replacing our salespeople. Um, moving is a is probably the most stressful time. Well, in you just you life. just helped uh, you've just helped our keeping a lot of salespeople now that are, that might be listening and tuning in, going, "Oh, great, I can keep my job." Listen, yeah, absolutely. Um, we need to have a human touch. We need to put people at ease, and you know, a, a, a faceless entity or robot that we know is not a real person is not going to do that. We're not going to feel comfortable or confident. Um, especially when your competitors have a real salesperson. So uh, I think sure. that, you know, don't don't think that you're going to replace your salespeople. But what we should be thinking about is how can we streamline and make the process of sales uh, a bit easier on our salespeople so that they can spend more time selling and less time, you know, gathering information or uh, doing, uh, you know, basic communication that is required, like confirm, confirming details, confirming information, you know, that should be all automated in the back end. And we could possibly use AI for it. We shouldn't be implementing AI for everything necessarily, but put it in your systems and your processes and in, 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 the, in the specific situations where it makes sense. And that's what's important. Now, because- if there's, if there's, um, you know, I know that you're saying that there's CRM systems that are out there that are looking to implement it or looking to integrate it. But let's just say this, my CRM doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, I, I want to just have it. So I have a funnel. Is there any recommendations? Do you know any chatbot AI systems out there right now that you'd be like, oh, I've tested out one or two of them that you could give recommendations. I know you're not making any money off them if you, if you advertise them or say them. But, you know, I know there's so many people out there that are stumped because they're, they're you know, these companies are pumping them all out and you go, oh, I just, I need to find one that works for me or works, you know, to at least get all the details for, you know, that I can upload to my customer, but then I get the emails, forget the CRM systems. Do you know any out there that you could use right now if I want to get started next week? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I can't give any specific recommendations on that. I'm sorry to to disappoint you about that. I do know there are... And that ends our meeting. And that ends our meeting. (laughs) (laughs) But there's a reason why. um, Because, listen, my name is very important to me and what I recommend and stuff like that. I don't want to throw something out there. I may have have heard of it and know that it's a chatbot and know that it does AI. But, like, are these systems going to last? Um, you know, in the recent update to ChatGPT uh, about a you know maybe a week or two ago, 
um, they basically wiped out a whole industry of services and products piled onto uh, the AI and the API open system that they had that they were allowing other companies to use. They wiped out a whole industry by up with their update. Uh, so I think that maybe it's possible very, very soon here that you'll be able to do it just within ChatGPT. Maybe they will implement some kind of system because this is probably one of the most asked for features is how do I do this? So I think that we should definitely be researching, and that's what the purpose of the AI movers community is, is like, what works the best? I haven't used all the AI chatbots. I haven't created a bunch of AI chatbots yet, but right. I think that it, there there is a lot of opportunity out there, and maybe they're not ready yet. I, there, a lot of people are thinking about uploading their rates to the ch- AI chatbot and doing estimates. I would I would caution against this idea. Because you're going to give customers the wrong idea about the move, and then you have to kind of go back and backtrack and change it. And you know, it's like now you per- have a bad salesperson, and you have that person that's pumping up pricing, and you're like, "No, please, why did you give them that rate? Why did you offer this?" And that customer is like, "Well, hey, I, the person I talked to on your website said, you know, it was going to be fifty dollars an hour for three movers," and you're like, "What? What just happened?" And that's the, and that's the point is we need to be very very careful about how we implement these different systems and ideas and strategies into our company. You know, I think that maybe the best implementation will be how do I collect information from my customer in, in the most efficient way, cutting down on the amount of time my cus- my my salespeople have to spend on the phone with them, or making it easier for customers to provide that information. I think that is probably going to be a better way to do it. And then the chatbot on your website or within your CRM, or maybe even have AI plugged into your phone number responding by text, maybe this thing just gives them basic information, normal questions and answers, but without any major promises, guarantees, details, pricing, anything like that. I think that is kind of something we should be very careful of trying to implement. Totally. Now, I I always I, I'm I'm definitely one of those people that can go down a rabbit hole. Like I'll go on a website and you know you're on Google and you start researching this and you know especially for people listening on or watching the video, you're going, oh man, Nick didn't give us the answer. I want to find this chat. I want to find like the right CRMs. I want to find the right systems. And uh, and I appreciate your hold back because your recommendations do hold a lot of meaning. And that's where I almost want to say, don't be like myself. Don't go sometimes down that rabbit hole of doing your research. Yes, do the research, get your understanding, and do as many demos as you can to find the right uh, company or you know the right software that's going to work for you. But what I do find that has been a game changer over the last year is communities. Why reinvent the wheel? And I think that's where having this AI movers community, if you have if you have a moving company and you don't understand what we're talking about during this entire process, during you know, this and whole conversation that me and Nick have had, and you're going, Oh my god, this is so way over my head. I don't understand. Who do I talk to? Uh, you know, my my kids are gonna laugh at me if I bring it up to them. My wife's gonna say, please stop talking about it. And my friends are oblivious to knowing even what ChatGPT is. Associate yourself with a community that's going to work. There's so many moving communities out there, but this in particular one, search it up on Facebook. It's AI Movers Community and invite yourself in so that you can understand and have a group that is all learning together. And then you get some experts in there like Nick that can help guide you and lead you into the right direction that can better suit your needs and then kind of give you some uh, in, enlightenment of going, oh, geez, I can make that image or I can, you know, maybe use this chatbot because you're going to probably talk to somebody in there that's thinking the same way you are. Oh, I want to go this direction. And you find out, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second, I should totally went on the other one. Which leads me into saying like, what future trends do you predict like in AI that could actually significantly impact the moving industry? Yeah, so I mean, it's a big question. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know for sure what is coming right now. They're going to do a whole new update to um, uh, ChatGPT. There's another version they're working on already. Right now, you can basically put like a small book of content in there and get 
some responses based on that. And the da- the amount of data that you can work with is increasing. Basically, it seems like every few months, every year, it's going to double or triple or ex- exponentially improve. So it's kind of really hard to say what it's going to do. Be- but what I can promise you, I want to be on the forefront of it. I will be making sure that I'm keeping up to date with every new development, new change, and all the different systems. And that's what we're going to do in the group. That's really the the purpose of the group is to make sure that we're at the forefront of what is going to change our industry and how we can make our lives better. So I'll give you one prediction. I'll get, it's a prediction. It's not a promise, but okay. I really Let's think that I really think that we're going to definitely be able to automate a lot of the communication that needs to happen between the moving company and the customer and your bottom line if you do this the right way and you, and you do it quick enough your bottom line is going to definitely improve you're going to book moves faster than your competitors and you're going to have a more streamlined sales process and i think that's where we should really focus on is the marketing and sales aspect of how do we gather information on our customers how do we make the sales process more streamlined and more efficient? How do we beat our competitors to the punch and get them that estimate quicker and get them signed up and put a deposit down on their move? And, you know, AI is going to be the thing that helps you do that faster. I really believe that. Nice. I appreciate it. Guys, this is Nick DeMauro from the AI Movers community, and that's only one aspect that this gentleman does he is a the brains behind uh you know for getting your moving reviews in you heard it today about uh you know don't just go there and ask them for a review there is a whole funnel system that works out there and he knows it there are uh marketing opportunities out there that i'm learning today that I should be in touch with Nick about, and you can find him online as well too. So join this community. And if you can't, you know, I'll leave um, his email address if he allows it uh, in the, um, in the contact details as well too, and try and connect you with Nick tomorrow. Guys, this has been a pleasure. I really appreciate Nick uh, that you were able to take your time out. Uh, I know you were telling me that you're you're moving yourself from moving some, you know, moving locations. So it's uh, it's it's always nonstop. Once you're the moving gig, I feel like you just oh, it's just another move. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Thank you so much for the time, Mark. And uh, if you're interested, also in the the postcard uh, digital. Uh, uh, advertising service that company is called rocket listings it's one of my services as well so check that out too okay cool i appreciate it and thank you for sharing the name too i was gonna probably ask you afterwards off camera and i'm happy that we're we're uh we're letting you know so that's called rocket listings yep rocketlistings.us perfect awesome hey guys i'm your host mark hershey with movified check us out on youtube linkedin uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we are everywhere. And I think we're going to have to go through Nick to get some more marketing advertising and you'll see us even more. We'll see you in your kitchen. So check us out. We'll subscribe, follow us, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much.